Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have another look at the open CNA or open pen conductor situation. This time what happens when you've got a three-phase supply. And this does apply to pretty much all installations in the UK, because though most homes only have a single-phase supply, in almost all cases that's actually derived from a three-phase supply. It's just that you only get the single phase into the individual property. It's also fairly common to have, say, a row of houses and say the first one's on the first phase and then the second phase in the next one and so on all the way down the street. So even though uh, you've only got a single phase in your property, the same effect where you've got a three phase supply can obviously occur there. So we'll have a quick look at that and also have a look at how some of these devices that uh, detect the situations actually work. And of course, uh, just a spoiler, it's actually uh, pretty straightforward and simple. And they're not actually detecting the fact that the conductor is open, but rather the symptoms that can occur when that happens. So uh, let's have a quick look on the board and uh, see what the situation is. Now, a quick just overview of the likely situation. And this is uh, primarily for the UK, but of course may apply in other countries, but the UK is what we've got here. So let's say we've got some uh, properties and we'll draw three of them because that's just going to make it uh, somewhat easier. So three properties in a row there, presumably all in the same street. And uh, what normally happens is you've got the low voltage or the under a thousand volts cables in the road outside, quite often underground but uh, can be overhead. So you've got your CNE conductor, or the combined neutral earth conductor, also called a protective earth and neutral in some cases, but basically it's the two of those combined together. And in the previous video, of course, we saw how that uh, it's just sort of tapped off to go into the various properties, but the difference is that in reality you've usually got three line conductors, or three phases. For some reason phases seem to have stuck as a older method there. The C and E conductor will be tapped off into all of the properties, of course, so you're going to have one going over there, one here, and one there. And then the other conductor in the cable, there'll only be one. I say most properties in Britain only have a single phase supply. Not unheard of to have a three phase in a domestic property, but it's certainly an unusual situation. And you're going to have one of them coming off here. The next house may well have the other conductor there, and then the third one will have that one. Now within each house, so in other words between these two points here, 230 volts, and the same applies here, and the same in here. So as far as the individual property is concerned, 230 volts, just a single phase coming in, all of this stuff out in the street is hidden and not considered. So a single phase in each property, and you've only got access to one of the line conductors or the phase conductors. Now the crucial thing about three phase is that these three are not all the same. They come from the same transformer, but these three are 230 volts relative to the neutral and the earth conductor, in this case combined, and that would also be 230 volts relative to the general mass of earth as well. But between each of these is not 230 volts, it's actually 400. So you've got 400 between those two, you've also got 400 between those two like that, and you've also got 400 between the other two. So any two of those, it's 400 volts between all of them. Now normally of course this doesn't matter because you've only got a single one inside each property. Those properties that have the three phase could use uh, 400 volt equipment if they wanted to, but say that's not applicable to domestic because there are no domestic items which use 400 volts. They're all 230 in the UK really only reserved for commercial and industrial premises, and even there, a huge amount of stuff still runs on 230. Now this system works perfectly well, provided that this uh, CNE or combined neutral earth conductor remains intact, and if it was just a neutral with a separate earth, the same would apply, it all works fine, as long as that neutral conductor remains intact, and uh, most of the cases, of course, that's exactly what happens. But uh, if this is broken, then this is where the problems can occur. Now at this end, or whichever end it is, these all come from a single transformer, which is going to be a three-phase transformer, and this neutral, or the combined neutral earth conductor, is tied to the middle of the set of windings, and provided that's the case, it's not a problem, it looks something like that. So you've got your three windings, L1, L2 and L3, we've called them there, and then the neutral point is basically the centre of those three, and each one of these three is 
basically 230 from one end to the other, so it's uh, 230 volts in there, 230 in there, and 230 in there. And because this is a metallic conductor, basically copper or aluminium, at the end of these it's also 230 because you're only involving this point from here to here, so it doesn't matter which one you've got, you're going to get your 230 volts here and between here and either of the other two. So while that's curved that's absolutely fine and uh, the 400 volts comes from the two ends of these, so if you look between any two of these like L1 and L2 for example, you're actually at the end of two windings and the reason it's not uh, just adding those together is because these are not 180 degrees out of phase with each other, it's actually 120 so you get uh, a slightly lower voltage than if you just added the two together but it's basically 400 between there, 400 there and 400 here and while that's all connected and fixed up properly not a problem at all and that's how the vast bulk of supplies in the UK and plenty of other countries are set up. Now the problem occurs if this uh, neutral or the combined neutral that becomes damaged so basically you're not having this connection anymore so it doesn't exist. What you've now got is this metallic conductor is still going to be connected to all of the installations downstream but it's not now connected back to the transformer so it's not going to be referenced to this point here in the middle so this voltage here is not going to necessarily stay at 230. Now if you had all of these houses and if the load in each of these houses was exactly the same say it was 10 amps here 10 amps there and 10 amps over there then the system would still work perfectly fine nobody would know that anything had actually gone wrong and that's because although there's no actual conductor here if you apply loads across that one and they're all connected together with this neutral point there, although it's not physically connected, current will still flow, but it's all going back via the other phase conductors. What that would look like here is effectively if this was removed, so that no longer exists. So critically, although it's not connected to the transformer, it is still connected to all of the other houses in the street and potentially a lot more over that side. And that's okay as long as the loads are all equal and you effectively get no current flowing in the pen there or the uh, C and E conductor as it's also more properly known. And while there's no current here it's the same as if it was just connected back to that transformer. Not a problem at all. However what goes wrong is when this is broken and then the load in each of these properties is different which in a situation like this is going to be inevitable because it's desperately unlikely that every single house is going to have the exact same load turned on all the time at the same time. And what then happens is that if the load in one increases and one obviously goes away, this conductor does not stay at the same potential relative to the others. It tends to get pulled in whichever direction the loads actually are. And the more unbalanced the loads are, the worse this situation gets. So if, for example, we had a property that had no load at all, and then the next one had almost, say, nothing as well, and this one had, say, some electric car charger plugged in at, say, 7 kilowatts or something, What's going to happen is that this point here is going to be shifted to its maximum extent and you're going to end up with some of these properties getting almost no voltage and unfortunately some of them might get anything up to the full 400 volts between these two. So instead of 230 there you might see something like uh, 350 and again this all depends on the loads you've got. These people here might only get say 100 and you can imagine this repeating down the entire street who knows what could happen and it's not even going to stay the same because as things in the properties are turned on and off which is going to happen all the time because of course that's just inevitable these voltages can shift anywhere between the full 400 volts and almost nothing so somebody might not get anything and somebody might get all their appliances totally destroyed because if you shove 400 volts or whatever into something designed for 230 then smoke and flames is going to be the result so this is really why it's so dangerous to have this conductor broken because although you've only got a single phase in your house, it's coming from a three-phase supply outside and you're going to get all those undesirable effects of that uh, three-phase system coming in, even though you've only got your two conductors. The usual result with these is that most of the properties have extreme damage. Things can go obviously melt, go on fire, TVs exploding and all that kind of thing. And if it's going to happen to a large number of properties, then it could be the whole street or even a whole housing estate that's affected. Huge amounts of damage, destruction or whatever else to equipment. And also more importantly because this conductor is obviously going into each property and is connected to all the metalwork in the property we also get the same thing that we saw in the previous video where anything connected to the main earthing terminal can also have a voltage on it relative to the actual earth outside 
So if you were standing outside holding some piece of class one equipment, then you can actually get a severe electric shock due to a voltage on this not being the same as the voltage on the actual true earth or the ground outside that you're standing on. Now in terms of detecting this problem, there are various devices on the market which you can buy from various manufacturers. A lot of uh, EV SEs or electric vehicle supply equipment has these things built in and it says, oh yes, perfectly safe, you don't need earth rods, you don't need this, you don't need all the rest of it. And up to a point that is true, but the thing is they can't detect that this conductor has been broken because of course the only way to do that would be to have something say at this end of the uh, connection over here and something at this end and it would be monitoring the continuity of that conductor. Obviously that's well outside the scope of individual properties. That would have to be the network operator installing a load of equipment and uh, cost to do that. So for single phase supplies which you get in most domestic properties, this kind of protection equipment which claims to detect this sort of situation where there might be a break here or something like that, all it's doing is looking at the voltage between the two conductors and if it's too high, such as in the case of this one, or it's too low in the case of say that one, then it's just disconnecting and just cutting that off. And importantly, it disconnects the line conductor, the neutral and also the protective conductor. Because bearing in mind, if you had that protective conductor, it's all connected back to this one anyhow. So you need to disconnect uh, all three. That's the sort of thing used in most EV charging type of equipment. And if for some reason you had a set of properties and the loads are all the same, then the voltage for each one could stay within the permitted range for each one. So even though that is actually broken, you might not notice straight away until someone turns on a substantial load in one of them relative to the others, or somebody turns something off and then the other two have got loads connected. So those sort of open pen type things or open C and E conductors or the various names that manufacturers give, a single phase it's just a question of is the voltage too high or is it too low? And if it is, well, we'll just disconnect the whole lot, and then uh, that's the end of that. So the reality is that most of these devices are just looking for the voltage between line and neutral, some cases between line and earth, and possibly between neutral and earth as well, but primarily between line and neutral. If it's too low or it's too high, just disconnect, and uh, that's the end of the story. But important to realise is not detecting the fact that that the C and E conductor out in the road is broken or damaged. It's just looking for the symptoms of that. And if you've only got access to the conductors here, this is pretty much all you can do. And as we saw previously there, even if that conductor is broken, it doesn't necessarily mean the voltage is going to go out of range, because if the loads on the various parts of the network are equivalent and similar, then it could actually be that the voltage is still within range, even though that conductor is busted and completely ruined and severed. Now there's another thing you could do, and some manufacturers may do this, and essentially it's to install an earth electrode, and then you're comparing the voltage of that to the line conductor, the neutral, and the earth, or the protective conductor. And if that was working correctly, you would assume that the voltage between that and the line conductor should be in that sort of 230 volts range. Between that and these others, it should be pretty much zero. And if, again, this goes too high or too low, you would imagine that there's some kind of problem. And if you get anything here that's more than, say, just a few volts, then again, there's going to be some problem there, particularly with the uh, protective conductor, because that's measuring between the metallic items of your installation to the true earth outside. However, the problem with doing this is you've got to install that earth electrode anyway, and of course you've still got to put it away from anything else that might be connected to these parts, because of course if it was stuck in the ground next to, say, a copper water pipe or something, then if this protective conductor goes high, then of course it's going to influence the electrode as well and wouldn't actually show you the true result. So you can do that, but it's not particularly common, plus you've got the cost of putting this electrode or whatever else in, and of course it's got to be in the appropriate location and so on and all that. And if you're going to go to all that trouble, you could just make that a TT installation anyway, because obviously that might just be an easier option and you wouldn't actually need this monitoring equipment anyway. Now those are for the single phase situation, which say most common in uh, domestic properties. But what about if you've got all three phases available in installation, such as commercial or industrial? Well, there is another way you can do this, and this is actually quite a lot better than just having the uh, single phase available. But of course, you can only use it where you've actually got the three phase within the installation. So let's put our uh, installation here. We'll say we've got our three phases here, and those we're coming into the building in the normal fashion. And you notice these are now red because the brown pen unfortunately isn't working very well. And then we're going to have our 
CNE, or more likely just the neutral within the installation, but it all goes outside to the same stuff. Now the other methods we saw previously could be used here, but you'd need to monitor the voltage between the neutral in the installation and all three of the other phases, so basically L1 to a neutral, L2 neutral and L3 to neutral, and again if that went out of range too high or too low, then again you could disconnect, and there'd be nothing wrong with doing that. And in fact if you fitted a single phase, say charging equipment, then that's the sort of thing that could obviously be built into that, and it would work just the same as in any other installation. But realistically, you've got a three-phase supply, you're not going to be putting it into single-phase uh, charging equipment because there's really no point. So what you can do in this situation, and this is how at least one of the manufacturer's things does work, is that you can take off a connection to all three of the phases. And bearing in mind, this would be inside a device, so you wouldn't necessarily be just doing this yourself. This is just what goes on inside the equipment. And then inside you can have three resistors of some value or other. The value isn't particularly critical as long as it's all the same. One for each, and then you connect them all together in a common point in the middle. Now it doesn't matter what value these are, provided they're all the same, then that just provides an equal load across the three phases. This is pretty much exactly how, say, a three-phase motor would be connected. There's no neutral connection here. Equal loads here, so the current just flows within those three phases and all is well. And then to determine if there's some problem with this C and E conductor, what you can do is to put a connection to the middle of those, connection to this, and then between these two points here, what voltage have you got? Now normally that should be zero, because this, with the balance load, should be the same as this, which goes back to the transformer, which has also got, obviously it's loads there and that goes right back to the central point of that. So you're just basically creating your own little equivalents of that connection back at the transformer and it's a crucial that those three resistors are all the same value. But if this conductor here became damaged or broken, say back out in the street or whatever, because of the various loads over here for the rest of the installation this point was going to shift away from its normal potential and then you can detect a voltage change here so if that goes over say a certain threshold then you can disconnect the entire installation. And that's how, say, at least one manufacturer's uh, device actually works. So you wouldn't obviously uh, assemble it yourself, you just buy the thing and install it, and then that does the job. Similar concept to the others in that it's monitoring the voltage between the line conductors and the neutral, but it's just a more tidy way of doing it. So if you have that open CNE conductor, combine it to an earth or pen, as some people uh, also call it, same thing then you can only detect really the symptoms of that, which is the voltage between the conductors, say line to neutral, is either too high or too low. If it is, then disconnect. And if you have the three-phase version, then it's the same kind of principle, except it's going to be L1, L2 and L3 to the neutral. And you can use that little circuit there we showed and that, which can obviously uh, make it a bit more convenient inside to detect an imbalance load there and of course the voltage is going high on this conductor out of range and you just set that to some appropriate threshold for that. So the, none of these solutions will detect that the fact that the cable is actually broken or damaged out in the road or wherever but they will detect the symptoms of it. The only problem with that is that if there are no symptoms and the cable is broken everything is fine and then as soon as somebody turns on a load in a house up the road the load balance shifts around high or low voltages appear, and if you're the unlucky one that gets the high voltages, stuff in your house is going to get damaged and destroyed. If you've got one of these things on your EV charge or whatever for things outside, then it will disconnect to uh, improve safety. Unfortunately though, it may well be too late to actually save any of the equipment that's connected to it. And of course the real answer for these sort of open CNE conductors and damaged whatevers is to not have them damaged in the first place, but of course that involves uh, replacing crusty old cables and things which are half a century old or more. So for the moment that's all we've got and until next time thanks for watching.